Aloha. I am Pastor Chuck coming to you from the great and beautiful state of Hawaii. And as you can see, the beach is behind me. The palm trees are swaying. Actually, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm actually no longer in Hawaii. I am back in the bitter cold state of Minnesota. Thank you for uh, joining me uh, on this uh, Sunday morning. Obviously, uh, uh, worship uh, has been postponed uh, today uh, because of the bitterly cold weather. Um, but to bring you a little warmth, I decided I was going to uh, still wear my Hawaiian shirt with my uh, uh, lays here that uh, uh, I was gifted at two different places in Hawaii while uh, my wife Sarah and I were on our uh, honeymoon vacation and uh, we had a wonderful time and I just wanted to come to you today and uh, just say hello and just chat for a few minutes and uh, we're not really uh, going to do a worship service here but I do have the uh, intended worship service that we would have had uh, this morning at Breakfast Church. Um, but uh, we will be having Breakfast Church again. We will be rescheduling that, and the date will be February 4th. So look for an announcement on Facebook about that. Um, so it is still coming. It is still going to happen, uh, but obviously not today because it's like 50 below zero with the wind and just too dangerous uh, to be uh, out and about even for a short time. So, uh, uh, yes, so I am back from Hawaii. Uh, we are both back from Hawaii. Um, we came uh, just in time for the coldest part of the year, apparently, uh, but that's okay. We did have, have we had a, an amazing and wonderful time. And I'm going to take this off because it's hard for me to hear because this is meant to keep my uh, ears warm and everything. Um, so I'm going to take this off uh, for, for now, but um, uh, today we're just going to have a, a brief discussion, a brief chat, and uh, I'm going to read the text for today, the gospel text uh, that you would have heard in, uh, at Breakfast Church this morning, um, and uh, then I have some thoughts about the text and about uh, what I learned on this trip, because in a, in a lot of ways it was a honeymoon, uh, sort of a delayed honeymoon, a vacation, but it was also in a lot of ways like a continuing ed sort of thing. Uh, we didn't intend it to be that, but we both learned a lot, uh, not only about ourselves as uh, so relatively uh, newlyweds, uh, been married about five months now, but about people, about ourselves, about uh, the world and how different people view different things. And so we'll get into that a little bit. Um, but the text for today uh, was is uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. And this is a familiar text to uh, uh, many of you. So I'll just read the text and we'll just chat about it just a little. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Beth Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked Jesus, Where did you get to know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. There is the text that was scheduled. It is scheduled for today. It is the prescribed gospel reading for this day. 
uh, pardon me, as I wipe something from my eye, I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it's a little bit of sand still uh, from Hawaii, uh, probably not. But um, uh, the, this is a well-known story and, and I'm not gonna dig too deep into it. Um, but what I what I do want to talk about is is what a lot of pastors talk about when we read this text or this text shows up in our lectionary for the for that week, um, and it, and it is it is uh, uh, the invitation to come and follow me. Jesus says, "Follow me, come and see." Follow me. Come and see. What do these What do these two things mean? What What is Jesus saying? Well, he's saying, "Come and follow me, Jesus." But come and see who I am for yourself. Don't just rely upon other people's words or other people's prophecies or other people's uh, ideas about who Jesus is. Come and see me for yourself. Come and see what it is to be a follower of me. Come and see what it is to be a follower of Jesus. Come and see how Jesus treats other people, how Jesus loves, how Jesus uh, encounters people. How does he encounter and talk with people in his ministry? How does Jesus live? How does Jesus interact? Well, as we read the Gospels, we, we know Jesus is is the one who is um expected to be quote unquote proper and to uh you know hang out with the elites and the priests and the and the 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 people in the temple who are the ones that are like you know teaching but instead Jesus is teaching them by hanging out with people in the streets the poor the blind the lame the lepers, the outcasts of society, even the icky Gentiles whom Jesus is out and about with. And I, I say icky because that's who the Gentiles were to uh, people of Jesus' uh, own community. The disciples didn't like it very often when Jesus would hang out with Gentiles. Send the Canaanite woman away. Send the Syrophoenician woman away. How dare you talk to this, this uh, woman at the well? She's not one of us. You can't talk to her, Jesus. And Jesus continues to talk to her. Come and see. Come and see who Jesus is. Come and see who we are as followers of Jesus. Although we are imperfect followers of Jesus. And there are no perfect followers. Let's be clear there. There are no perfect followers. There aren't any followers that even come close to perfection. Don't model your life after what someone else is doing. Don't say, well, that person's a great Christian. I want to be just like him. No. Follow Jesus. Now, you can be inspired by other people. You can see other people's gifts and say, wow, they're really good at that. Uh, I, I hope to cultivate that skill in my life. You can um, be inspired to uh, enter the ministry um, or any number of things. You can be inspired to be a doctor or a nurse or a school teacher or whatever it is, uh, a firefighter. You can be inspired by other people. You can say, wow, that person is a great example of someone living that call or that role in life. I'm inspired by them. You can be influenced by them. You can say, boy, they're really good at that particular ministry and I want to be that good. But ultimately, we're not following that person. We're not following Paul, the apostle, or Peter, or Andrew, or Nathan I.L. We're not following these people. We're following Jesus. Come and see who Jesus is. Now we see who Jesus is and how we as followers of Jesus live and interact with other people. And that, I think, is why so many people today are so turned off by the idea of even coming to church or being associated with Christianity because the reality is a great many Christians 
fail miserably, not just at being perfect. None of us are perfect. We're all going to fail. We're all going to uh, falter. We're all going to fall. But we don't represent Jesus very well all the time, or even some of the time. Christianity, in this country in particular, has a bad rap for sometimes very good reasons. Christians have done and said horrible things in the name of Jesus Christ and continue to do so today. You don't need to look very far to see that. Flick on the news, turn on the radio, you'll hear about someone somewhere claiming to be a follower of Jesus who says terrible things. And not just in their own way, they'll say terrible things and then claim it's because God wants them to say these terrible things. You all know what I'm talking about. This is no secret. But see, when we as Christians, and I say we collectively, because we are responsible for one another in a great many ways. I'm a Lutheran pastor. Many of you listening to this are Lutherans, and we may look at another denomination or another group of Christians and say, well, that's not us. But they still do things in the name of Christ, the God whom we worship. And Lutherans have this history of remaining silent, quiet, don't rock the boat. Sometimes we have to rock the boat. Martin Luther rocked the boat. Dietrich Bonhoeffer rocked the boat. Martin Luther King Jr., whom we will celebrate in this country tomorrow as a ob day of observation of his life. And not so much his life for sure, but more so what he stood for and what he accomplished. Did he do it perfectly? No. Was he a perfect person? No. But there's a great difference between what someone like Martin Luther King Jr. did imperfectly and what, say, the Crusaders a thousand years ago did. They did it very imperfectly all in the name of Christ, and they carried out horrible things against other people and other Christians and other people of non-Christian faith. So it's easy for us to get tied up into all of these different ways of, of following Jesus. But I think we're not really following Jesus when we do those things. We're following ourselves and our own desires and then using Jesus as an excuse to get away with things that would otherwise be declared as wrong. Come and follow me, Jesus says. Don't follow the ways of the world. Don't follow the ways of even the church. Follow Jesus. Come and see who Jesus is. And Jesus, and this is hard for some people to hear, Jesus loves everyone. There is no one on earth for whom Christ did not die. This is one of the central tenets of the Lutheran faith, but the historic Christian faith. Come and see who Jesus is. How does Jesus treat the lepers, the outcasts, the quote-unquote women of ill repute, the men of ill repute, the Roman soldier, the servant, the slave. How does Jesus treat all these people? With love and compassion and mercy. I witnessed on this vacation that my wife and I went on to Hawaii. 
or it was our first time there. Um, I am just now becoming a traveler. My wife, Sarah, has been a traveler for a long time. And uh, neither of us had ever been to Hawaii. And um, the second day we were there, by the second day, we knew we wanted to come back because it was a spectacular experience. It is the cultures all blend together and yet remain distinct. They carry their own cultures and is it is a true melting pot of beauty and humanity and faith and ways of being. The love of Jesus is shown in so many places. It is shown in the love that people have for the land. They are a part of it. It is a part of them. For the laid-back nature that people just live their life in, in Hawaii. There are one-way bridges where there are no stoplights or signs or, or flashing gates or people directing traffic, but there are one-way bridges where three or four cars will go one way across the bridge and then somehow people on the other side will just stop and let them come. And then the other side will stop and let three or four more cars on the other side come their way. There is no sense of, we got to get somewhere in a big hurry. We got to do something right now. Let's go, go, go. It's laid back. It's chill, as it were. Everybody was so friendly. One afternoon, Sarah and I were having lunch and we met this old surfer who was at lunch. And he was clearly struggling with something and, and um, my wife, Sarah, who's about to be ordained, by the way, uh, uh, and one week from today, uh, on January 21st, um, she, one of her great skills is to just strike up a conversation with somebody on the street that she's never met and that she sees needs someone to talk to. And so she strikes up a conversation with this gentleman sitting just a table over from us. And he goes into his story and don't need to know what his story is. God knows, but he was struggling with, with health issues of not his own making. And um, and I thought in those moments, this is who Jesus would talk to. This man might not be welcome in a lot of churches, maybe. He was an old surfer. He had long hair. He looked not well, and he wasn't. But we spoke with him, and he had just a beautiful heart. And he told us he was ready to go home. And by home, he meant to be with God. He was ready for his pain to end. I think about this man as I talk about this, because this is the type of person that Jesus invites us to come and see, to meet with, to be with, to sit with. Not only in their pain and in their sorrow, but in their joy and in their happiness. And he told us a couple of good stories about his life in Hawaii, how it had been really good to him. So to conclude this sort of just discussion this morning, I want us to think about who Jesus is, who Jesus really is, who Jesus walked with and lived among and hung out with and 
I want us to realize that we don't always have to be in the hurry that we think we have to be in. We don't always have to be in a hurry. We can slow down. One of the signs in Hawaii we saw was slow down. In fact, there are multiple versions of that sign. Slow down. Enjoy life. Today, I look out at the storm and the snow and the cold. And it is days like the day that we are all forced to slow down. Take that time. Take this precious time. Think about who Jesus is. How Jesus loved. How he spoke with people. How he healed people. Not just because Jesus had magic powers, but because he healed them with his presence. He healed them. Physically, yes. But more importantly, he healed them within. God touches us in many different ways in many different places. And for us, at least for me, Hawaii was one of those places where God has touched me and healed me inwardly when I needed it. But God can do it everywhere and anywhere. God can do it in this storm. God can do it in the church. God can do it wherever God chooses. Because it is not about what we do, but about what God does for us. I think we'll end it there for today. Um, today was... Uh, an unexpected day. I really didn't know what I was going to talk about when I popped on here, but uh, I just wanted to speak from the heart and give you a little message of, of hope and hear the scriptures and um, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for what God has called me to. I'm grateful for all of you. I'm grateful for my wife and my family, extended families. 2024 looks to be a very promising year in so many ways. Challenging, but also very promising. It's off to a good start. And even if tomorrow, to me, for me, it doesn't feel like it's off to a good start, I'm going to try to have faith that it is. Because God never leaves us or forsakes us. God walks with, us, walks with us wherever we are. And Jesus invites us to come and follow him. To see him. Not only in the historical figure of Jesus, but to see Jesus in each and every person we meet. That's my challenge for you on this day and this week. Hunker down, cover up with a blanket, get the fireplace going if you have one. Um, it's a cold, blustery, rigid day, but God is with us. God is with you, and God loves you. Um, until next week, I guess. Uh, we'll see you soon. And um, this is Pastor Chuck signing off. Have a great day, everyone. Aloha. Uh, Mahalo, which means thank you. Bye, everybody.